Greetings, and welcome to this episode in the series of videos on working with remote sensing with ArcGIS Pro. This series is brought to you by AmericaView, in partnership with Virginia Tech, the Virginia Cooperative Extension, and Virginia View. I'm Cherie Auckland, and I'll be your guide. This video tutorial series builds on ongoing and previous collaborations and contributions provided by the USDA NIFA through the ADVANCE Project, the National Science Foundation, through the GeoTED UAS Project, the Ohio State University, and the Virginia Space Grant Consortium. This video series is associated with the Remote Sensing with ArcGIS Pro second edition book. We will use Landsat 9 imagery in this series, and we'll also begin with Chapter 10. Links to resources for this video series, including free access to the textbook and to the videos for chapters 1 through 9, are available in the video description below. An analyst has more control over the supervised classification process than the software-controlled unsupervised classification process demonstrated in Chapter 21. Through supervised classification, the analyst selects pixels representing recognized landscape features, or pixels, that can be identified from other sources, such as high-resolution aerial photos. Knowledge of the data, the classes desired, and the algorithm to be used is required before selecting training samples, which are samples of spectral values within the image that pertain to specific features or patterns. The analyst essentially trains the software to identify pixels with similar characteristics by identifying patterns in the imagery and choosing the spectral classes for the informational classes, thus supervising the classification process. See your text for an in-depth discussion on the details of performing a supervised classification. We'll divide this topic into three chapters. In this first chapter, we'll introduce classification schemes available in ArcGIS Pro and create training samples to use in the classification. We'll be using the same informational classes that we used in the chapter on unsupervised classification, Chapter 21. So as a reminder, the classes are as follows. Notice that we've added an optional fifth class, which we demonstrated in Chapter 21, for the clouds that are in this image. Here I begin with a new map project and the six-band composite image created in Chapter 15 set to a natural color combination. The first step in the supervised classification process is creating training samples, a sample of spectral values characterizing each informational class. The training sample file is then used in supervised classification to evaluate the spectral values of all pixels in an image and to assign them to a specific informational class. Let's go to the Imagery tab drop down Classification Tools, and open the Training Samples Manager. We'll use the Training Samples Manager to create a training sample file. Notice that an informational classification scheme is already built into the Training Samples Manager, NLCD 2011. We can create our own schema using Create New Schema, or if you have an existing informational class, you can load it here. But we're going to start with this NLCD 2011 schema and modify it. Remember, we only need four informational classes, but I am going to include the optional clouds class we added in the Chapter 22 video. Notice that if we right-click any of these informational classes, we can add, remove, or edit. If you removed an information class by mistake, you can just add it back here. Since we only need five classes, I'll remove the others until only five remain. We'll leave Water, Developed, we'll remove Barren, we'll leave Forest, we'll remove Shrubland, we'll remove Herbaceous, and we'll leave Planted, Cultivated, and Wetlands. Now let's rename these classes to correspond to our informational classes. I'll right-click Developed and edit the properties of the class. We'll use this one for Urban. And we'll give it a value of 1. We'll make its color red. And you can add a description here if you'd like. And then OK. Now pause the video and do the same for each of our informational classes.
Now that we've renamed our classes and given them the correct class numbers and color designations, we need to save our classification schema. We'll use Save As to avoid overwriting the NLCD 2011 schema. Here we named the schema Chapter 22 Schema. Confirm that the file is saving where we want it to go in the output location. And then Save. Now that we have our classification schema, we can create training samples using these drawing tools. We'll be switching between them as we work. This process will result in a polygon feature class and is different from the schema. Let's start classifying with water. We'll zoom in to Smith Mountain Lake here. Now the first part is we have to select the classification that we'll be training and we'll choose the circle drawing tool. You could choose any of these tools, but I'm going to choose the circle drawing tool. Notice that I have a crosshairs here. This indicates that I can start drawing. And let's draw a circle anywhere in the lake's body. Notice that as I drag, the circle enlarges from the center. It is important that you're careful here. Be sure to stay away from shorelines. We don't want to capture any of those as spectral values for water. And if you make a mistake or you don't like the sample of pixels you captured, just select the row for the sample and hit delete. Now I'm going to capture several circular areas in the lake, moving around the entire lake. If you like, you can switch to the polygon tool for irregular areas, say over here. I'm going to switch back to the circle tool and just draw some other circular areas, trying to capture all the different colors of the water within the boundaries of the shoreline. Note that I'm also capturing a bit of water that's turbulent. Remember, the point is to get samples of different spectral values related to the feature, in this case, water. Let's also choose samples from other water bodies. So remember from previous chapters, we have Carvin's Cove, which is up here. If you can't see it very well, remember you can always switch to color infrared which will help you locate these water bodies a little more easily. So let's do that. We'll switch to color infrared, which you may remember from previous chapters is 432. And now we can clearly see water bodies here and there. So let's go to Carvin's Cove. We'll choose some pixels from Carvin's Cove area. And I'll just keep my image classification still got water. I'm still using the circular tool. And maybe for this one, I'll do a polygon. So I'm just going to kind of go around the boundaries of this lake with a polygon tool. And maybe another circle or two. And maybe we're going to go down here to this river and grab some pixels from the river as well. I'm just using the, the circular tool just because it's quick for now. Here, let's go around the edges of this part of the river here. Notice I'm clicking as I go just to make vertices. That allows me to go around things. Okay, let's go ahead and save our work so far. And note that what we're doing here is different from the classification schema. This process will create a feature class of the training samples. So let's go down here and save the current training samples. What will you save as? Chapter 22 TS for training samples and save. Now, once you finish with water, and I'm not going to do this live, move on to training your urban, forest, and agriculture classifications and clouds. This can take some time. As you work, remember that we're not concerned with individual features within, say, an urban area. For this exercise, all streets, parks, golf courses, etc. within the urban area will be classified as urban. Be sure you've collected samples across the entire geographic spread of the image. 
and be careful to avoid getting too close to the edges of water or including roads in forest and agriculture. Now pause this video and complete your training samples before proceeding and be sure to save both your training samples and your project. So you can see here that I'm finished and I've changed back to my natural color symbology and I'm zoomed to the extent of the Landsat image and you can see all of the training samples in the map viewer coded in the color we've chosen for the schema. For example, forest training samples you see here are green, urban are red, and agricultural samples are yellow and water of course is blue. I made the clouds sort of a light blue. You might be able to see them here. So when have you collected enough training samples? Well, it depends on the area, the variation in spectral signatures of the land cover, and the project. In the next chapter, we evaluate the spectral coverage to determine if we have collected sufficient training samples. So let's head to the next chapter where we demonstrate the process of evaluating the training samples before conducting the supervised classification in chapter 24.